So this question says the function f is defined by f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 4x. And then it asks what value of a satisfies f of 5 minus f of a is equal to negative 15. So this is a simplify question. Simplify questions are very short, somewhere between one and three lines long. So we have that. And they also will contain either an equation and or expression. And we have two equations here. So this is definitely the setup for what you expect to see in a simplify question. And really all this means is that instead of thinking first and foremost, how do I solve? I think first and foremost about how do I simplify? So how do we simplify this function here, for instance? Well, x minus 4x can be combined. So this can become f of x is equal to the absolute value of negative 3x. I can't simplify that any further. While I do have a negative sign here, while you might think to yourself that the absolute value should just make everything positive, that's true. But because we do not know the value of x, I can't simply remove the absolute value symbol and say f of x equals 3x, right? This does not simply equal 3x. I have to leave it like that. So that's all I can do in terms of simplifying this here. So let's move over to the side here. And now we have f of 5. So I'm going to treat this like a plug-in information from the question strategy. We know that we need f of 5. So I'm going to find f of 5. If I know f of x is equal to the absolute value of negative 3x, then f of 5 will equal the absolute value of negative 3 times 5 which is the absolute value of negative 15, which is equal to positive 15. So f of five is equal to positive 15. So we have that much. I'm gonna replace f of five with positive 15 now. So this equation here will now become 15 minus f of a equals negative 15. I can combine like terms again. I can subtract 15 from both sides. So my 15 is canceled out on the left. I now have negative f of a is equal to negative 30. I can divide both sides by negative 1 so that I have now a positive f of a is equal to positive 30. And the question is, well, what does a have to be in order for that to happen? So I'm going to say, hey, f of a is equal to the absolute value of negative 3 times a. And I know that I want that to equal 30. So how can that happen? Well, it can happen in two ways. Either negative 3a is equal to 30, or negative 3a is equal to um, negative 30. These are the two possibilities for making this true. So in this case, I divide by negative 3, and I get a is negative 10. So that's one possible answer for a. And over here, I divide both sides by negative 3, and I get A is positive 10. That's another way to get my answer. Looking at the answer choices, it looks like I have the positive 10 version of that, and therefore choice C is the correct answer. Just to make sure I'm very explicit here, um, the reason why I create these two equations is that's just how you solve absolute value equations. The inside of this absolute value can equal a positive 30, right? Because that would make that equal to 30. But the inside of this absolute value can also equal a negative 30 because the absolute value of negative 30 would also be positive 30. So whenever you're solving an inequality equation, I'm sorry, not inequality, an absolute value equation, you're going to break that equation up into two separate equations. One where you're equal to the original value, the other where you're equal to the negative of the original value. And that's it. So that's our answer. So A equals 10 is the correct answer here.